Welcome to the channel. Today, we are continuing our free Flutter course, and in this video, we'll discuss an important topic, classes. Let's start with a definition. Simply put, a class is a template used to create objects. We've already covered what variables are, how to create them, and how to interact with them. As we remember, one of their tasks is to store information. We've looked at basic types like string, int, bool, double, etc. But what if we need to create a more complex variable? For example, we might want our variable to store not just a number, but information about a person. This is where classes come in. Let's look at an example with a person. Don't worry if this seems confusing at first. We'll clarify everything. When we declare a class, we are essentially creating a template that defines the properties of our future variables of that class type. Classes contain fields. For example, a person has characteristics like first name, last name, age, and so on. To store this information, we declare fields using types we are already familiar with, such as string and int. Fields look like variables. We don't need to initialize them right away because we don't know in advance which person the variable will represent. However, we also need something called a constructor. Don't worry about what it is or why we need it just yet, as we will cover it in the next lesson. For now, just remember that it is declared as follows. We write the name of our class, and then, inside parentheses, list all the fields of our class separated by commas. Notice that each field is written with this and a dot. Don't forget the semicolon as well. Now, having declared our class, we can start creating its instances. This looks like creating a regular variable, but we specify person as the type. For initialization, we need to use the following syntax. As with the constructor, after the class name, inside parentheses, we list the fields in the order they appear in the constructor. For example, let's create a person with the following parameters. Don't forget the semicolon. Once we've created an instance of the class, we can now access its fields. For example, let's print the last name of our instance to the console. To access a specific field, we use a dot after the variable name, followed by the field name we need, in this case, the last name. The syntax should look familiar since we used it in the last lesson to access the length field of a list. By running the code, we'll make sure it works. Now, let's talk about the methods of our class. In addition to fields, we can also create methods, which are functions. For example, we might want all instances of our class to have a greeting function. To do this, we need to create a corresponding function in the body of our class. The function type will be void because it doesn't return anything. The name will be greeting. It won't take any parameters. Notice that inside our function body, we can freely access our fields without using dots. With this in mind, we can print this to the console as follows. Notice that we didn't need any function parameters for this. Let's now try using the method of our class. It's almost like accessing a field except to call a function, we use parentheses. This syntax should also be familiar since we used methods like add and remove with our lists. By the way, lists we created are also classes, or more precisely, instances of a class. Let's run our code and see if it works. As we can see, the values we provided when creating the instance were used in our function. We can also change the values of our fields. This is done using the assignment operator, which is the equals sign. Let's change the age and try calling our method again. Running the code, we see that everything works. Now I suggest we do a small task. Create a class car with model, brand, and maximum speed fields. This class should have a speed increase method. 
The idea is to display the current speed on the screen, starting from zero up to the maximum speed, increasing by five each time. For example, zero, then five, then 10, and so on until the maximum. Pause the video and try to solve this task. Solution. To solve it, we need to declare a car class with the following fields. Model and brand fields of type string and a maximum speed field of type int. Next, create a void type method with any name. Leave the parameters empty. In the method body, use a for loop. Initialize a variable i with a value of zero. In the condition, specify that i must be less than or equal to the maximum speed. Instead of incrementing i by one, we will increase it by five. This is done like this. However, there's another way to write this. We've covered arithmetic operators, but there are also operators that perform arithmetic operations and assignments simultaneously. You can see them on your screen. This means we can replace our expression with the following. Now, each iteration of our loop will increase i by 5. Inside our loop, we'll print the value of the variable along with the text. Let's test it. Create an instance of car, specifying values. Call the method and run the code. As we can see, everything works. That's all for today. We covered the basics of classes, how to create and use them. In the upcoming videos, we'll dive deeper into classes. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new lessons. See you in the next video.